Hello, my name's Tony Avenia. I'm the colorist for the boys' comic book, and today I'm going to show you how I color a panel. Now, normally when I get the, the pages, they're just black and white like this. I send them out to flatters, and those are people who go in and lay in flat colors. And what that allows me to do is go in and either just take my paint bucket and use the color that I want on on an object, or I can select it with the magic wand. Um, I have contiguous, unticked, and that way it selects everything on the page that's the same color. And then I can just fill things in that way. And uh, I like to work with channels. Some people like to work with layers. Um, but I prefer channels because it allows me to... I know all the quick key commands. So I know my flats channel is channel 5, so command 5 gets me to my flats channel and you know so forth but uh, you can also do with layers you can have uh, work on a have my background layers my flats and then work on a layer above it um, set to a transparency or something like that a transparent layer uh, some people like to have their line art and channels uh, this is just the way that I learned when I was working at Wildstorm so anyways once I'm once I have my page set up um, I usually I usually lay in the colors as I work, but for this one today I'm I already have these colors laid in 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 this panel. So what I'm going to start out with here is this face, and I work with uh, almost exclusively airbrushing. When I was at Wildstorm, we had to do work in a house style, and that was the cuts and gradients, which what that is is you take your lasso, make your selection, and then take your gradient tool, set to screen, and add where the you think the light's coming from. Then you take another lasso, make a different cut, and you sort of layer it in until you get the effect that you want. You know, you can build depth and, and all that stuff that way. And that was the house style. And the purpose of that was that when you have, you know, eight colorists on staff and you all have to jump in and work on, on a single book, it all has one cohesive look. You don't have to it doesn't look like a hodgepodge of different people colored it you know even though sometimes they did but as I um, started to work freelance on my own I slowly gravitated towards a style that that I felt really suited what I liked to see and what I like to do so for the boys um, my main tool is this hard-edged airbrush with a little bit of a feather on the end set to screen. Now what what how I'll start usually is um, I'll take my orangey color which is gonna give me the light and just give it a little bit of a a stroke somewhere you know in the skin tone and then I will sample something that's a little bit light that I like and now what I'm gonna do is actually start out with that tone in normal and for women's faces I usually go to the fully feathered brush just because it gives them a little bit of a softer look um, you don't want to color women and have them have a lot of uh, harsh lines going across their faces so anyways I start out here and I just give it a little bit of form where I think some form should be and I'm just building uh, I'm being very conscious of where my shadow areas are and where they're going to be. Those I'll define a lot of those a little bit more as this takes shape. So once I have that, then I can switch back to my screen color and start working with the screen. And what I'll do here is um, I will lower the flow of this brush down to 10 or 20. And also, I'm working with the speed pad, which is uh, 
it's supposed to be for gaming, but a lot of people use them for Photoshop now. And what's cool about that is you're not always having to reach for the keyboard. I can keep my hand here, and there's a handful of of keys. Uh, there's a scroll wheel, and you can set it, set your macros, and all that, all that good stuff. Um, I have my brushes mapped to the scroll wheel, and what that allows me to do is make big leaps in my brush size at a time. If I was doing it with the keyboard. I'd have to do do it in smaller increments, or I'd have to constantly be coming up back over here to the master diameter um, selection on my brush palette. But for this, I can really just kind of set the brush exactly how I want it. So, anyways, once I once I have that uh, first tone laid in, I will go back in there with the screen and start giving this face a little bit of shape. Now, when you're really first learning, it's very important to look at as much reference as you can and copy, 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 copy. And a lot of people um, are maybe scared to use reference or think like, oh, well, that's kind of cheating or something like that. It's not. You, got, you have to make this stuff believable, and you can't really make it up out of your head. Now, after you've worked for some time, then it all becomes like a little bit automatic. I have certain things that are in my head that I know are going to work. Um, they might not always be 100% true to life, but in general, they're good enough. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to go in here and see I'm just giving this a little bit of shape. Now, once I think this has about the amount of shape I want then I'll go back in with that uh, hard edge brush that feathers and that feather is based on the pressure you apply um, with the pen it, it's the pen has a nib that's has a certain amount of sensitivity and you can um, you know by varying the pressure that you put on your tablet make it harder or a little more feathered so then I'm, I'm going to go in there and define some of these areas a little more with that. But I don't want to get too crazy. Like here on this cheek here, I think I overdid a little bit. So I'll go back with one of these lighter tones set to normal and just brush right over it. Now once this is the way that I would like it to look, as it is now, I'll take my base tone, which is the darkest color that I'm using, uh, darken it up a little bit, go back to my hard edge brush, set set my tool to normal, um, flow back to 100, and then I'm just going to start dropping shadows in here where I think they go. And again, this is all stuff that just takes practice and repetition. I know that on a nose, that uh, the lights come in here, the nose has a little bit of a shape coming out this way, so the light's going to hit that, but here the nose turns away from the light, and this is the bottom under the nostril, so that's going to be mostly in shadow. Um, I like to add a little bit of shadow here for the eye sockets to give the eyes a little bit of uh, depth, push them back a little bit. Uh, the nose casts a shadow this way. And once I have that, all my shadows are about where I want them. I'm going to go back in there with uh, maybe this bluish color. Desaturate a little bit. Set my tool back to screen. Set my flow pretty low on my airbrush tool and then just add a little bit of light bouncing back into the shadow areas and what that's going to do is is give me a little bit of depth and make it a little bit more believable that this is a real person <laughs> 